If you've got an X and Y chromosome with the resultant hairy chest, it's a pretty good bet that you've fancied yourself at the controls of one of these things. And it's a pretty safe bet that the closest you'll ever get is a computer and a CD-ROM. However, that's a lot closer than most rats get, unless they live here at the University of Florida. You see, it's this little chap and his mates, or rather cells from their brain, that are in charge of flying this simulator. It's all the work of Dr. DeMars, a neuroscientist who's interested not only in how the neurons in brains work, but in finding out ways of making them work for us. The basic goal of this experiment was to study ways that you could interface a neural culture, a living neural culture, to a device, an airplane, and have it learn to fly. What Dr. DeMars has done is got the neurons in this dish to think. That's right. No one has told them how to fly a plane. They've worked it out by themselves. So how do you make a rat brain pilot? We take a little bit of tissue from the rat's cortex. So if you think of a brain, you have the wrinkly portion of your brain. We take a little bit of that tissue and we digest it with an enzyme to essentially give us the individual neurons separated into a liquid. This brain soup, literally 25,000 individual unconnected neurons, is placed on top of a matrix of 60 electrodes. Dr. DeMars now has the beginnings of a brain that's ready to teach itself to fly. All he has to do is plug the matrix into his computer and set the program off. Almost immediately, the individual neurons begin to form a complex network. The beginnings of a thinking brain. What's happening is that the cells are receiving signals from the computer and sending their own signals back to the computer. If they send the wrong signals, then this happens. But with time, the neurons manage to form a network that will react correctly to the incoming signals and so keep the plane in the air. Oh, I can fly! In fact, this mini-brain can get so good that it can negotiate mountain ranges and thunderstorms like the best top guns around. I think the most enjoyable part about that particular experiment was the fact that you could take a you know, collection of neurons who didn't know how to do anything and then provide inputs so that over time it could learn to do something. Right? So in the end, you can take one of these networks, plug it into the system, right, and it can fly. It can fly the plane. You'll be pleased to know that Dr. DeMars isn't proposing that the next generation of Boeings are piloted by a dish of rat brain. But what this pink rat cyborg is doing is to help lift the lid on the way the brain learns at a cellular level. So perhaps in the future, when a real pilot does this and gets a dunk on the head, we may have a better idea of how to fix him up and get him flying again. <laughs>